So after the first teaser trailer release of Alien Romulus, there's been some interviews with Fede Alvarez on various websites. This one comes to us from Collider. Here's what he had to say about working with original effects designers from Aliens. For the creatures, we brought in all the guys from Aliens. They were in their early 20s when they made Aliens, and they were a part of Stan Winston's special effects team. And now we had them at the top of their game. They have their own shops and so we brought them all together to work on all the creatures. Because we went with all animatronics and puppets at every level, I even got the chance to be under the table with them, puppeteering all these animatronics. There's a lot of films that rely on CGI for a lot of scenes, but there's something special about using practical effects in a movie, and Alvarez knows the true benefits of adding both into a film. I have this obsession with no green screens, so we built every creature and set. Everything had to be built so we were really living and breathing in these spaces. But I'm not an anti-CG guy. I come from a background where I know how to build the effects myself. I still do VFX shots in my movies to this day. It's just whatever is best for the shot. And when it comes to face-to-face -face encounters and moments with creatures, nothing beats the real thing. The next interview is from the Hollywood Reporter website, and they covered a lot of topics around the film. The story focuses on a group of 20-something space colonizers and scavengers who have the misfortune of meeting a xenomorph inside a dilapidated space station. The film has a notably young cast that's led by Kaylee Spaney, Isabella Merced, as well as David Johnson, Archie Renault, Spike Fern, and Eileen Wu. Alvarez says that the idea to follow younger people into this world came from the alien's deleted scene that Cameron eventually restored in his extended special edition cut. There's a moment where you see a bunch of kids running and riding a big wheel around the corridors of this colony, and I thought, wow, what would it be like for those kids to grow up in a colony that still needs another 50 years to terraform? So I remember thinking, if I ever tell a story in that world, I would definitely be interested in those kids when they reach their early 20s. This movie was supposed to be a Hulu release, which is a streaming service, but the studio changed their minds at the start of principal photography. Now they're going for a full theatrical release. He also loves all the alien movies in the franchise. There's another reason why he chose a younger cast for this movie. While it was inspired by the deleted scene in Aliens, he also says this. In my movies, I'm always interested in those characters. Maybe it's because I grew up in a small country in Uruguay. I think it connects to a lot of people who grew up in small towns and think that all the important things are happening somewhere else. Right after his movie called Don't Breathe, he had a meeting at Scott Free, which is Ridley Scott's company. They were about to start doing Alien Covenant. He mentioned a few things that he wanted to see in the film, but Covenant went in a different direction. So a few years later, Ridley Scott remembered the ideas that Fede wanted in an alien movie, so they called him up and asked him if he wanted to write and direct the next alien movie, and he agreed. Ridley Scott has seen the movie, and so did James Cameron, and they both liked the film. But Ridley Scott actually spent an hour with Fede Alvarez and just talking about all the things he liked in the movie. It's also interesting how both Ridley Scott and James Cameron had comments about totally different things in the movie. Even though it was intimidating at first, the best part of this experience is to sit down with the masters of our craft and have a conversation about what we do and learn how to do it better. There was an article a while ago that talks about how Isabella Merced got to see a very gory scene, saying this, So there's a scene that I'm in, and they all had to turn away. Not one person stayed looking at the iPad because it was so disgusting. Fede Alvarez says there is a clue about this scene in the teaser trailer and it takes place in the first shot. So this might be referring to the part where the camera pans over a pod. There's a tiny hint in there and it has to do with that scene that Isabella talked about, which is great. When you manage to have an idea or concept that has not been seen before in any alien movie, it's also something that has never happened before in the history of movies and science fiction. Before the release of the teaser trailer, 
Fede Alvarez had tweeted this image saying tomorrow. But if you increase the exposure levels of the image, you can see a hidden image of an alien. There's another article over on Games Radar that covers a few other topics about the film. The movie takes place 20 years after the first Alien movie and before Aliens, the second movie. This would be during the 57 years that Ellen Ripley is in hypersleep. Technology in the world of Alien can change vastly, but I think it's not dependent on time, it's dependent on place, where you are. So the characters of this movie and the world are very blue collar. The technology is still very low tech and analog. And look, I'm a kid from the 80s. Any monitor with some VHS tracking issues puts a lot of joy in my heart. The meaning behind Romulus is explored in the film. It's based on the Romulus and Remus myth. If people aren't familiar, it's the creation myth of Rome. Romulus killed Remus. It's not a siblinghood that went down the right path. Alien Romulus is a film about siblinghood. A lot of the character stories are related to siblinghood. As you may know, Will and Yutani, which is the big company in the Alien movies, has this obsession with Rome and imperialistic iconography. You really have to go deep into the canon, but a lot of the planets and a lot of names come out of the early Roman Empire, either from rivers or cities. And there's a station where most of the story takes place. It's called the Renaissance Station, and it's made of two big models that are connected. One is Remus, the other one is Romulus. And that's as much as I can tell you. During the teaser trailer, someone says, run. This is said to be the actor David Johnson, but he doesn't answer if he is an android or not. We just have to watch the film and find out. We went to crazy extents in this movie to do things practically. We had Weta workshops doing a lot of the face huggers. And not only that, we brought back the guys that worked on Aliens. Shane Mahan, who sculpted the Queen's head himself, was the one in charge of building all the xenomorphs for our movie. And when I say build, we built them. We did full animatronics for all the creatures in the movie. It was one of the best experiences in my career, just to see these guys that I admire so much back working together. There were moments when we'd need nine puppeteers to make a creature work, and you had all those guys now in their 60s under the table, and I'm there with them because there's not enough hands. I got to be under the table puppeteering these things with the guys that worked on the original Aliens, so that's been the best part. The sets for the movie were also built. He wanted a place he could physically stand in, which gives you a sense of realism, as opposed to being on a green screen, which is not as good as the real thing. That definitely happened here. We built everything until the last corner. In that respect, it was all old techniques. A lot of the approaches to effects, they were all based on way more old school approaches to movie making. Will and Yutani has always been obsessed with the xenomorph creatures. This story includes another time when they experimented with the alien. The movie is really a survival horror, just like the first one. The topic of the pulse rifle is brought up again. What we see in the trailer is an early version of this. The actual pulse rifle from Aliens was not invented yet, but the pulse rifle was invented a few years before Aliens by this general, and the name of this person is said to be Reigns. When asked about if Alien Romulus will have any plot threads to the Alien prequels, he said this. The reality is that it is a standalone story, but it's filled with references to every movie. It is truly a love letter to all the other movies. I have my favorites, but I love them all. Every time I went to the theater to watch an Alien movie, I had an experience that would stay with me all my life. Even the ones where I'm like, I'm not sure that's what I wanted. They still stayed with me. So the movie has connections with absolutely all of them in their own way. So that's it for the interviews and extra information about the making of Alien Romulus. It seems like Ridley Scott and James Cameron both like the movie. And if it does well in the box office, perhaps we can get another movie in a few years. So what are your thoughts so far? Tell me in the comment section. Thanks for watching. This is Carlos or Acid Glow and I'll see you next time.